Hey everyone, what is going on? It's Bama Saltwater, Steven here. As you can see behind me, it's part of the Gulf Shores Pier. Still isn't repaired yet, so I'm out here by boat. That's the octagon. Nobody's on this part of the pier. They're on the other side that's actually completely disconnected from here. So you know, there's nobody on here actually fishing right now. So I'm out here. It's a rough day, it was a rough trip. Kept the camera tucked away so it stayed dry. And let me show you what I'm using real quick. If you watch my other videos, you've seen me use this before, but this is my Pen 712Z. A little vintage reel, it's over 30 years old, still going strong. Not the quietest thing, not the smoothest thing, but it flat out works. Now I have this with a 20 pound braid on here, a Star Aerial seven foot medium heavy rod. And then my lure choice is a half ounce mackerel jig. You can get these on BamaSaltwater.com. I still have a good stock of them. They've been flying off the shelf, but that is my favorite lure for jigging for Spanish, small mahi, or anything else. It just flat out works. And I'll show you how I like to work it. But my leader is 50 pound mono. I'm running about two foot of it. I have that connected with a double uni knot. If you don't know how to tie a double uni or any line splice, like an Albright or FG, you can use the tiniest black barrel swivel you can. If you use anything gold or silver, most likely you're gonna get cut off. It's about 27 to 29 foot right here. Pretty day out, just windy. Let's get a cast out, show you how I work this jig. Fish on. There we go. Okay. First cast. As soon as we came out here, have a fish on. Great. What is it going to be? Oh. Is that a nice Spanish mackerel? There we go. All righty. That worked out really well. I didn't think I was going to catch anything, but you never know till you try. But I just got a nice Spanish mackerel out here on that little white half ounce mackerel jig. But he's going to go in the cooler. That's a great eating fish. We're going to see if there's any more. These things school up in big numbers out here. I mean, you can catch a bunch, but you're allowed 15 in Alabama and there's no size limit on them here in Alabama. So let's throw him on ice and keep on fishing. So I really like to make a decent cast, a long cast. I'm going to let out some line and let it sink to the bottom. And this is the exact same technique I used fishing on the pier as well. Once it sinks to the desired depth, normally I like it to sink to the bottom, I'm gonna start twitching it. Fast twitches. You want it to look like a bait fish trying to run away from a predator. These Spanish mackerel, the king mackerel, jack creval, redfish, they're all capable of chasing something at that speed especially the mackerel. They have great eyesight. See, and look how effective that is. Immediately hooked up. They have amazing eyesight, fast, sharp teeth. There they are. I think they're absolutely beautiful too, but the easiest way to tell if it's a Spanish, because the small king will look like this as well. But look at that dorsal fin. See all that black on there? That's your Spanish mackerel. Now my favorite way of bleeding these fish out what you do is you go and spike the brain, which is typically right behind or in between the eyes. So I like to bleed these out by taking, this is a five inch sword utility knife, but I'm gonna go where these gills are, go up underneath, and I like to cut these gills just like that. And then I have a water and ice mix in here. And see this water is gonna pull out all that blood from this fish. And then what I'll do is I'll mix in the salt water with my ice. Once I'm done fishing, I'll pour all this in there and you'll have a really nice slush and that fish will be bled out and that meat will not be nearly as bloody. It'll be easier to clean and taste fresher. Maybe a little gruesome, but it is humane spiking that head and bleeding it out. I'm gonna throw this jig out and try to get a few more Spanish. And I did bring some frozen cigar men to see if a king mackerel's hanging around too. So now that's sinking again work it back to us now these mackerel eat squid and bait fish so, especially the little glass minnows and the little bitty white squid that hang around that struck and when you find them schooled up you can really put a hurting on them oh one came and hit it Let's see if they'll do it again oh try. <laughs> trying oh chasing after it <laughs> There we go. Finally got him to come back for it. Oh man. Oh, that's a little bit better one too. 
Ah, oh, it came off right at the boat. They do have some fragile mouths. Now, anytime you get a bite, you want to check your leader. I say this all the time, and a lot of times I don't practice what I preach, and I'll make another cast out. But this one, I really need to retie. Look how frayed up it is. So I'm going to cut a few inches off and retie that jig. So I've retied. See that? That's why I like a little bit longer leader because you are going to have to cut it off some. Now you can use wire. Personally for Spanish mackerel, I like mono. I like the 50 pound. You get a lot more bites using something that's harder to see. But there's plenty of people that use wire too. You can use some single strand or seven strand light wire. But you'll get cut off a lot more on the mono, but you just catch a lot more fish, in my opinion. So let's keep on fishing. Here we go. I miss the days of fishing on the octagon here. My brother and I were raised up fishing right up there. They didn't have that platform, but they did have a couple picnic tables and a lot of good people met up there. Still friends with them. They got plans to rebuild it. Just, you know, things work very slowly. A lot of agencies you have to go through. But we got our jig back down there. It's Spanish are schooled up really nicely. It's like one of my favorite things to target in the springtime are your pelagic fish like these mackerel. Because these things do not stay here year round like your reds do, your flounder, your sheep's head. They follow the bait, they follow the warmer water. So that's why they're called pelagic fish. And in the springtime, they all come here, which is awesome. Mm, there you are took a few casts finally found the school again they'll move up and down and around the pier you just gotta be patient and wait for them to come back so there's another spanish Woo! it's a good example of one there that's a nice one skinny little joker though they aren't very fat but perfect little fish fresh meat Gotta love it. Got a nice Spanish. I'm gonna get another cast out. Here we go. Love catching these things. Cause you can catch them on light tackle. You know, a 3,000 to a 4,000 size reel is perfect. Seven to seven and a half foot rod. And then I really like braid. If you pier fish a lot, or if you're just used to mono, it is easier to handle. But braid casts so much further. There's no stretch and it's very thin so you can hold a lot. If you do pier fish a lot, you want to get something that's easy to see for you and other people because pier fishing can be very tight knit shoulder to shoulder and you don't want to be throwing a very dark braid out there where nobody can see it and then i like it same thing for this scenario too is i can see my line Ooh, Ooh that come on There you go <laughs> finally went about 30 minutes without a bite finally got another bite get away from the engine another nice spanish just adding that to the box of fish these are awesome gotta love them they're fun for everybody too especially like throwing bubble rigs and gotcha plugs look at that dorsal fin it's gonna go in the cooler been about 30 minutes since my last bite and uh, finally got another fish. Nothing has hit my cigar minnow yet, but it's the sun's still kind of high. These fish bite better during low light conditions. You know, early morning, real late evening. Further the sun goes down, a little bit better the fishing should get, in theory. Now I've also caught them plenty of times straight in the middle of the day too. you are oh yeah still catching them that's good it's definitely slowed down a little bit but at least i'm still getting on them he wants to come on this side you gonna come in there you go 
Woo! Another fish. These are perfect schoolie sized fish. When I say schoolie sized, when you find a big school of fish, whether it be speckled trout, redfish, Spanish, they're all going to be relatively the same size in that school. Not all the time, but a lot of times. So, this one right here just went back, jumped out of my hand. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. He literally just flopped back in the water. Well, eh, I guess that was his lucky day. Good for him. I like to keep it real here, so I didn't edit that out, but I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> At least it wasn't the only fish I've caught today. Let me get that jig back out there. That was uh, not intentional. Let's see if I can get redemption. Got to hold on to the fish a little better. At least he got to go back. Maybe some good karma will come my way. Oh, come on. There you are. Oh, that's a little bit better one, it feels like. I mean, we always say that, and you always want it to be. This one's actually pulling a little bit of drag. Yeah, there you are. Man, they're so pretty in this water. They're very silvery. They got those yellow spots on them. Those are just awesome looking fish. And that is a much, much better one. I'm pretty happy with that. Look where that jig is. I love those single hooks. So much safer to use and they're just as effective as like a gotcha plug or a treble hook floor. But heck yeah, that's another one for the cooler. I guess I, I was gonna leave, but <laughs> now that I'm actually catching fish again, I'm gonna stay and keep on jigging. Let's keep on going. I knew once that sun goes down just a little bit more, you know, it's 4.30, almost five. That bite should pick up real well. So, I like to say you get out when you can, but if you have a chance, the best times are early morning and your late evenings, especially the warmer the weather gets. You wanna get out before it gets too hot. Oh, see, I knew we would get another bite. Oh, they fight hard against this current. Got a strong southeastern, mostly east wind, and a very strong east current. So, here we go. I'm bring you a little closer. Oh yeah, there you are. That's not a bad one. And uh, I hate to bring the S word up, but I have yet to see a shark right now, which is good. That's a really good thing, because they're very prevalent out here on this pier. That's a perfect hook set too, right on top of their mouth. They never touch your leader. You don't have treble hooks slinging around getting you. That's why I like these. I'm going to keep on tossing this jig behind us. It'd be nice to grill up some of those Spanish mackerel, some garlic butter. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Making my mouth water now. Mmm. There you are. <laughs> He's a drag puller. <laughs> yes. All righty. Just when you start getting discouraged, the one comes up and hits that G. Skip it out from behind that odor. All right, we're going to boat flip you. I think so. You don't want to put any slack in the line because then the jig will come right out of its mouth just like it did there. But at least he was in the boat when that happened. Another nice one. It's another pretty little fish. Oh, if you didn't know already, they do have some very sharp teeth. Pliers help a lot, or those little hook outs I use a lot to get your lure out of its mouth. You don't want to stick your finger in there. They have excellent eyesight, and they're just fast, but they do taste good when fresh. This little jig's putting in some work. Let's get another cast out. There we go. Just letting a whole bunch of slack line out, fall to the bottom, and then we'll just jig it up. Real easy working it. I think it's gonna be my last cast and I'm gonna make my way back in. So here is the octagon. See all those white X's? It's probably gonna be hard to hear me because of wind. But each one of those, if I'm not mistaken, that's a bad piling and they'll have to replace them. So, but there's the top of the pier. You can 
see some of the railing posts are still there. There's some of the observation deck you can kind of see. That was newly added right before Sally, but it's in pretty rough shape. Bunch of wire hanging down. See, and you can see the good part over there. That's not connected at all to this part. See the end? There's the bathroom where you can actually get on a fish. You can see people there. Pier house and the restaurant. State park. Pretty area, pretty facility. It's just a shame seeing this the way it is. It's crazy what Mother Nature can do. But at least we caught some fish on it. Push through and then it came back down again and now it's coming back up. Fish are confused, we're all confused. Do we wear a jacket? Do we wear shorts? What what do we wear? <laughs> but I'll take this weather over that hot, hot July weather anyway, to be honest. Yo, what is up? It is the next day. I'm home, obviously, at my handy dandy cleaning table, and look at these beautiful fresh fish. These are Spanish mackerel. You saw me catch these in the boat. But I'm gonna show you three different ways that I like cleaning them. Now for today's video, I am using a sword fillet knife. Here we go. This one, like I said, is a seven inch flex fillet. First way of cleaning Spanish mackerel I'm gonna show you is if you have a bunch and you're just trying to knock them out, make a slice behind that dorsal, rotate that knife around and follow that bone all the way back and then you can flip it over and skin it their skin's real thin so you have to be careful not to cut through it and if you do that's fine see we left a little bit on there nobody's perfect i'm definitely not all you do is go trim that up just like that a little bit of skin isn't going to hurt you so there's a very pretty, fast, and easy way of cleaning a Spanish mackerel. There is a bloodline. I do bleed these fish out, but there's still a distinct bloodline. That's where their lateral line and all their nerves connect to their spine, which is right here. See, their spine, but we didn't miss any meat. Uh, you can cook it just like that and eat around it, or you can go through and cut that bloodline out. But personally, I leave it just like that and then just eat around it. It's not gonna hurt you. So that's a fast way of doing it. Very effective, especially if you have a bunch of fish. The other way I like doing it, you can take your time and do the same thing. Cut behind that dorsal, just like that. Go through, cut this fish open, and take a little bit more time all the way down and then just fillet it like you would anything else. Use that flexible fillet knife to go around these thin bones. I'm gonna do the same on top. Typically I'll clean the Spanish like this when I get the bigger ones, because you can take your time and get all of it. But just kind of keep tension with your thumb. I'm peeling back this fillet and then working my knife along these bones. There we go. And now you have a pretty fillet. You can leave the skin on. They do have very minute scales, very small scales. Most of these came off on my hand and on my fishing rod when I caught them. But the skin is definitely edible. If you want to, leave the skin on. Take the back of your knife or a descaler. But I like the back of my knife because these are small scales, so you can cover that whole surface area. And then go and trim this belly out like that and now you have another pretty spanish fillet i do want to say with this belly strip i kind of trim it up some and i saved these i use those for flounder baits you can salt them throw them in the freezer 
and then you can hook them through your jig to catch more Spanish mackerel or like I said you can bounce them down on the bottom on that jig and try to get you a flounder or a redfish really shiny and effective bait now that's a way of filleting the Spanish today I'm going to cook them whole on the grill so this is a final way that I like to do take the back of your knife and get all these little scales off you see them little bitty scales and the slime because we're going to leave the skin on there's a lot of nutrients in these fish they have a lot of good oils they're not nearly as full of mercury like their bigger cousins the king mackerel if you eat a lot of king mackerel there is a pretty high mercury content in them but these are a little bit different they're much wider meat still have some healthy fish oils in there they're just an overall good fish i like them but i rarely rarely freeze them but you can see the back of this sword knife is really doing a great job of getting these scales off this fish. Look at that, it's almost translucent. See this side, you can still see their pattern. This side, super smooth, very clean and translucent. That's what we want. So I'm gonna do the whole fish this way. So now that we got the majority of these scales off, Let's prep this fish. We're gonna fill dress it. So we're gonna remove the guts. On these, I'm actually gonna cut the tail off. There we go. That's optional. I don't eat the tails on Spanish mackerel. Let's gut this fish. So you wanna go through from these gills. Very shallow cut, because you don't wanna pierce all these guts in here. You don't wanna pierce these organs, because it will taint your meat. See, open it up, and then just kinda of scoop them out. There is a small little vein that runs here. So I just kind of take my finger, scoop them out, and then cut these gills out as well. And then you can kind of pull everything out at once. See, now let's spray this up. So now that's a clean fish. We got all those organs out. We cleaned it up. It was bled out, it's descaled. And there's only one more thing to do other than season it, but there's only one more thing to do before we actually go up and prep it to cook. And that's score it. Scoring it allows it to evenly cook and get all those flavors and seasonings into the meat. So I just do a little cross hatch section like that and see. It exposes that meat. Like I said, it'll cook a little bit more evenly, but it allows the seasonings that we're gonna use and the sauces to get down in there. Now that's a whole Spanish mackerel ready to go on the grill. So here we go. Let's throw that on ice, clean the rest of these little fellas and get to cooking. So we have our grill lit. Coals are starting to turn gray. Put a little pot with a stick of unsalted butter, letting this melt. That's going to be our main basting sauce there. Keeping it pretty simple. We want to taste the fish. I don't want to cover it up with a bunch of seasonings. So I'm keeping it simple today. We make complex dishes on here. We make simple stuff. And this is something that you can do even if you're staying at a condo with a small grill or something, you can do this yourself. Heck, even in a campground with a grill, it's all you need. And some few simple ingredients and obviously the fish. But the only thing I want to do to our butter is add some garlic salt and cayenne pepper. You don't have to do this. I think it adds, adds some additional flavor. So let's add some cayenne pepper. All right, and that's all to taste. You don't have to add a whole bunch, or you can if you want, if you like stuff real spicy. And then garlic salt, here we go. Now we're gonna let that melt and we'll give it a stir. Here we go. I'm gonna give that a nice stir. You can already smell it. it. Smells amazing. There we go. Now it's time to add our fish. We have our two Spanish mackerel. That's all I'm cooking right now. And all I've done is take a paper towel and kind of pat them dry. I'm gonna lay them on indirect heat. Just like this. All righty. Now let's add some seasoning to it. Really all I'm gonna do is garlic salt. 
Ooh, that's hot. There we go. And I'm not gonna add any other seasonings other than this. This is just Lowry's garlic salt. It already has enough salt in it to where if you add more, it's gonna be too salty. <laughs> but these fish are fairly oily. They can take this type of seasoning, but you still wanna be able to taste the fish. Next thing we wanna do is baste them. Here's our melted cayenne butter. Just gonna baste it. This is also gonna get the flames really riled up. That's why I like the indirect heat. Cause, oh, it's hot. Cause once we baste it, I'm actually gonna close the lid and it's kind of grilling it and smoking it. So one stick seems to be perfect because you want to make sure you do the other side too when you flip them. All right, there we go. Now let's close the lid. When all that lid's closed, these are practically going to smoke and get that nice flavor. That fish is going to cook thoroughly. We'll check in in just a couple minutes and then flip it and re-season the other side. It has been two and a half minutes. This fish doesn't take long to cook. Let's go ahead and give it a flip. Oh yeah, that's perfect. I mean, perfect. You don't want it burnt, but you want it thoroughly cooked. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. My garlic salt. Whew, it's hot. And then let's do the rest of our cayenne butter. It smells pretty good. It looks real good too. Like I said, there's no wrong way to cook Spanish mackerel. You can fry it, you can blacken it, you can do tacos. This is something a little bit different and simple and easy, but I think it's gonna come out real well. Look at those teeth. See those teeth on them things? So use up the rest of this butter. All right, that's all our butter. One stick's all it needs for two fish. If I had all four fish on there or a whole bunch, I'll do two sticks of butter. Time to close our lid for another two and a half minutes and they'll be ready to plate. This time to plate up our freshly grilled slash smoked Spanish mackerel. Oh man, that smells delicious. Anything on the grill smells good, but when you start adding butter and garlic to it, it's even better. So I was gonna pull them off, but they still had a little bit more time to cook. So I'll put them over the heat and now they are ready Whew. so let's pull this one off perfectly cooked see that that'll look good with some garnish you know some parsley and lemon and stuff you could go do all that but we're gonna let that cool down and just try this spanish mackerel fresh off the grill and straight from the water to the plate it never went inside never went inside a refrigerator so let's let it cool down and we'll give it a taste. It's cooled down enough, I'm hungry. I wanna try a bite of this fish. Let's get out in the sun, come by the water. It's a beautiful day besides the, uh, besides the clouds, but it is pretty. Very windy, I didn't go out in the Gulf today, but at least we were able to get these yesterday. Taste test, peel right up. Oh wow, that's perfectly cooked. See how Spanish mackerel is a white meat just like anything else? It does have more fish oils in it than say a pompano or a red fish, red drum, but it's just as good. I just don't recommend freezing them, but I do know plenty of people that do. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Just nice, fresh fish. Nothing bad about it. It's not over seasoned. We can taste this fish here. It's exactly what you want. Why well, catch a fresh fish and cover it up with a whole bunch of stuff? If we want to do that, we can just go buy some. I'm gonna give another bite. Wow. Highly recommend, highly, highly recommend grilling your Spanish mackerel. Butter, garlic, salt. You can add pepper, you can add cayenne to it, whatever you like, but keep it simple. It took only like five minutes. That came out so good. I'm impressed. I knew it would be good. I didn't know it would be this 
tasty. So I'm gonna finish this food. I'm gonna share with everybody and let y'all go. I hope you enjoyed this type of fishing. Go check out BamaSaltwater.com. Pick you up some tackle if you want. I have those mackerel jigs still on the website. Appreciate each and every one of you. If you subscribed, you are awesome. If you have not yet enjoy content like this and want to see more, go smash that subscribe button. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, especially this fresh fish and being able to get out and enjoy beautiful nature. And we'll see you later. Oh, there. Bottlenose dolphin. See if he'll come up and chase some mullet. Oh yeah, it is. Here we go. This is cool. Really cool way to end a video. Y'all see it? Look at that. Oh, here it comes. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. That is so cool. <laughs> wow. Right here, see where they went. Oh, here they come again. Whoa. <laughs> you got a seagull or a turn. It's actually a turn. I was chasing fish as well. And then you have these dolphin coming up chasing mullet. Bad day to be a mullet. Two of them just wreaking havoc on the bait. Oh, here they come again. Wow. It's awesome. And there's the dolphin boat there. It's pretty cool. You can pay to go watch this. Oh, there it goes again. Whoa, that was so cool. They are awesome. So they go and push these mullet up against these rocks to where the mullet cannot go anywhere else. They flip upside down and chase these things. What a great hunter. Alrighty, here we go. I'll see y'all later. That was cool.